Hello and welcome to the Portswood Row Transforming Cities Fund presentation. Uh, my name is Andrew Ovenden. I'm a senior comms officer at Southampton City Council and I'm joined by my colleague Emma Baker, who is a senior transport planner at Southampton City Council. Uh, we'll be talking through this presentation with you today. We also have a series of moderators who are also online who you may or may not hear from. That is Wilson Massey from Balfour Beatty, Zoe Byrne from Southampton City Council and Wade Holmes from Southampton City Council. Their role on this call is to moderate uh, questions as they come through that uh, will then be presented to us in a Q&A session towards the end of the presentation. So if you're using this on your computer or you're using this on your phone, there should be an option on the side to enter a Q&A uh, session where you can ask questions. If you're on your phone, it will pause the presentation and you'll return to the presentation after you ask your question. If you're using this on your laptop, you should just be able to ask questions as you go. Um, so I think that covers us there. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand over to Emma and we will get started on the presentation. Hello, my name is Emma Baker and as Andrew said, I'm a senior transport uh, planner here at Southampton City Council. Um, I'm just going to give you um, a brief uh, background on the uh, local transport plan, uh, which is the transport strategy um, for the city um, and it spans right up to 2040. Um, the strategy um, sets out how we will tackle uh, transport and mobility challenges to support sustainable growth. Uh, and this strategy is built around three key three key themes, which is a better way to travel. Uh, so things like healthy and active and clean transport options, a system for everyone where people um, feel safe, uh, where the system is inclusive and attractive and also successful Southampton. So making sure that the city is well connected and is resilient um, to other um, other parts of the, the transport network, such as uh, the motorway um, and rail network, etc. Um, so a core focus of the strategy is centred around uh, connecting uh, people to places and helping them to cycle, walk uh, more easily and making public transport more attractive. In order to do this, uh, we're looking to create an attractive and livable city uh, where people feel safe um, walking and cycling and also a, a mass transit system uh, which connects uh, people to other modes of transport including the bus and the rail network and making sure that travel between modes is seamless. Uh, so the next slide here just sets out um, the background to the Transforming Cities programme. Uh, so following the adoption of the long term transport strategy, uh, the City Council uh, bid for some central government money from the Department for Transport. This was done in partnership with um, Hampshire County Council and the, the two authorities were awarded 57 million in total um, for the city region. Uh, which is available up to March 2023. Uh, this is matched by an £11.5 million contribution from the City Council and other partners, including Hampshire. This programme is built around uh, four key corridors that link uh, key residential areas uh, to transport interchanges and employment hubs in particular. In order to deliver um, challenges, the programme aims to transform the way people travel, um, their lifestyles and gateways such as um, interchanges and also public spaces. So the next Sorry. <laughs> so the next slide that you can see here sets out the challenges that we wanted to address through the Transforming Cities programme, which includes uh, congestion. Um, at the minute, congestion is set to growth without intervention uh, follow, um, as planned growth emerges, uh, which will cause additional delays on the network. We're also looking at um, bus uh, journey times and how we can make the bus more attractive and reliable. We already know uh, that Southampton um, is uh, uh, leading in terms of patron bus patronage as we are the fifth highest um, authority outside of London. 
We're also looking to address rising inequalities, a uh, particular um, concern to this uh, project, the Portswood Road project, uh, with areas of deprivation. So the next slide that you can see here uh, sets out why uh, we have focused on Portswood Road as part of uh, the Transforming Cities program. Uh, so there are a significant number of trips uh, between Eastleigh and Southampton and also between Southampton and Eastleigh. So these represent about a quarter of trips. Um, so we know that there are sig there's significant flows um, along this corridor. In addition to that, we know that there's potential to encourage greater walking and cycling uh, as there are over 1,400 households that live within a 20 minute walk of Portswood Road. This corridor is particular importance um, due to its links with key employment sites such as the city centre, the university and hospital, uh, as well as the airport and business parks in the area. Uh, we also know that a number of uh, journeys that currently pass through Portswood Road do not have a de destination within it. So therefore they are just passing through um, and it may be possible uh, to look to move some of these trips to other corridors such as Thomas Lewis Way. So what do we know about Portswood Road already? Well, we know that around 7,500 vehicles already use the corridor per day and around 20,000 um, use the Thomas Lewis Way corridor. We also know that around 22% of people living within the city region do not have access to a car and this increases to 51% in some parts of Southampton. Therefore, improving um, walking, cycling and public transport um, are uh, fundamental to encouraging these people um, to travel. In terms of um, bus travel along Portswood Road, um, it already has 26 buses per hour. However, these um, services are uh, significantly impacted in the PM peak uh, commuter times. Uh, Portswood Road also forms part of the uh, cycle network uh, via um, SCN6. We already have good levels of commuter cycling in Southampton at around 4.8%. This is just 2% nationally, so we're all making, already making a good headway there. Uh, Portswood Road also boasts excellent connections to the rail network and passenger numbers are continuing to grow. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Will, um, sorry, Andrew now, who's going to give you the background on the perception survey that was undertaken um, and will help inform uh, the development of options as we go forward. Thank you very much, Emma. So from the 11th of September to the 9th of November, we ran an initial perception survey where we invited residents within that 400 metre radius, around 4,100 homes and then businesses on top of that to give us their feedback on how they travel in and around the area and what they would like to see improved. We had 203 responses to that, which a response rate of around 4.93%. When receiving a um, mail drop through the door like this, you'd usually expect to get a four to 5% response rate. So we're quite pleased with the response rate we've received so far. So in terms of the questions we asked, the first question we asked is whether people live within a 20 minute walk of Portswood High Street. The 20 minute walk radius is on that map, which is the 400 meter radius we mailed to. So as you'd expect, a majority of people said that they do live within a 20 minute, uh, 20 minute walking distance. We asked people what their main mode of transport when traveling to Portswood High Street was. Overwhelmingly, people told us that they walk to Portswood High Street. There were other responses as well. People said they cycle and some people use car uh, and a small number of people use e-scooters, scooters or the bus. We asked a supplementary question to this. What other modes of transport do you use to travel in the Portswood area and why? Respondees also indicated that they cycle, walk and drive through the area. Our primary finding reading through the responses was that many residents primarily walk when travelling to Portswood High Street, but will occasionally use the car when going food shopping. Some sample comments we pulled out at random state the following. 
car when supermarket shopping to carry the bags, cycle bus just when it's necessary and convenient, car when going to the supermarket, otherwise I also cycle. I sometimes use car, park in Russell Place when it's wet or icy. So we start to build a picture of how people travel around the area. We ask people, what is your main reason for traveling to the high street? Again, a lot of respondents came back to us and said that shopping was their main reason. We had other responses as well, uh, working in the area, passing through, going out for nightlife or eating out as well as other, which we asked people to specify. The next question we asked was, would you like to see any of the following improvements made to Portsmouth High Street? We gave a list of potential improvements, including widening footpath, uh, reducing waiting times to crossings, um, removing pavement clutter. Uh, the highest response rate came out for separated cycle lanes. We did also have a significant number of people give us other suggestions, which I'll go through in just a moment. But um, high response rates for reducing speed limit, removing street pavement clutter and more car parking. You can see here on this screen the numbers associated with those responses. We asked a supplementary question to this one as well. Are there any improvements you'd like the council to make to improve travel and transport in the wider Portsmouth area? Many of the comments focused upon improving facilities for buses and cycles, as well as improving traffic light waiting times. Some comments highlighted that they would like to see additional bus services, but this is something outside the council's control, uh, as obviously the bus services themselves are re responsible for this. So um, this is not something we can cover in this particular project. Other comments suggested we should fill in potholes or improve uh, drainage or flood alleviation. Again, much like the, the bus issue, the Transforming Cities Fund is allocated for transport improvements, but these concerns could potentially be picked up in other projects in the future. Other suggestions uh, that came through included reducing, uh, introducing speed cameras, introducing speed bumps and stopping rat running, particularly on the side streets off of Portsmouth High Street. Uh, there was also comments about improving parking facilities in the area. There were a limited number of comments that didn't want to see any changes made or opposed specifically measures to improve cycling facilities in the area. But as I say, these were a very small minority of comments. Some sample comments again picked at random from this section. Uh, improve the environment for cyclists and walkers, reduce through traffic and enable cafes to spill out onto the pavement, bus lane and reduce clutter. Also stop cars, vans parking on the pavement by installing metal bar lots as they do in other cities. Also have better parking enforcement officers on the road. Proper bike lanes separated by curbs, more bike parking. Use the, car, use the street parking space for outdoor dining. Install charging points for electric vehicles more generally where suitable locations are available. Potentially walking route signage that gives time between key destinations and more frequent bus services. So the council recently installed uh, some temporary cycle lanes in Portsmouth to support social distancing and encourage active travel. We asked respondees to the survey whether they supported these remaining longer term. 72.64% of respondees said yes, whereas 27.36% said no. We also asked whether people supported the council's Green City Charter commitment to encourage sustainable travel and improve air quality in the city. Overwhelmingly, people said yes. 80.79% said they agree, with 1576 saying they are unsure and 345 saying they disagree. In addition to the survey, we also held some telephone conversations with businesses. Uh, so we called round to have a quick chat, make sure they've received the survey and get an understanding of their comments and concerns or what they'd like to see improved within the area. Generally, businesses seem to agree that temporary cycle lanes were a good thing, but this agreement wasn't unanimous. Some business employees commented that they travel afar and parking is bad in the area and they have to spend a lot just to park for work. Some respondees discussed the idea of pedestrianising the area. This was unprompted. Um, this wasn't something that we started chatting to them about, something they brought up of their, on their own backs. Um, there was quite a mixed perceptions of this. So some people were saying that they think it'll be a really good idea for the area, whereas others were saying that they, they disagree and think it'll be really bad for the area. So there's some mixed, mixed views on that. There was also some comments from businesses about what would happen if on-street parking were removed altogether. So what have we learned from the survey? Well, the first finding we've taken from this is that a majority of people walk within the local area, but many respondees also noted that they use a car when going to the supermarket. 
and shopping is the main reason why people travel to Portsmouth Road. There was a general consensus that people agree with the Green City Charter and the trial of cycle lanes in Portswood, which is encouraging. And there's support for introducing separated cycle lanes, reducing the speed limit, removing street clutter and increasing car parking. There is an acknowledgement as well that bus facilities and services could be upgraded and improved. And there are very mixed feelings about the idea of pedestrianising the area. At this point, I'll hand back to Emma, who's going to talk through some of the measures we could look at uh, introducing off the back of this survey. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so, yeah, as you can see from the slide here, uh, we're going to focus on uh, what uh, we could potentially do um, as part of the delivery of improvements along the Port Portswood Road corridor. Um, so we know from the survey finding, findings that there is support for walking and cycling measures and also um, a desire to improve um, public transport. Um, so things that we could look to do is start to re claim some of the street, pay, street space for walking and cycling to help create more attractive streets. Uh, this would uh, could include the extension of cycle infrastructure um, along the corridor to better connect with facilities at Beavis Valley and Stoneham Way. Uh, we could also look to improve footways um, and crossing facilities uh, by widening pavements and providing raised um, junctions or crossings. Uh, we could also look to deliver uh, continuous footways at side road junctions to give pedestrians uh, more priority. Um, you can see an example uh, continuous crossing which has been delivered elsewhere in the city in the image above. So other options that we could look to deliver in terms of uh, bus priority, uh, we could look to introduce bus lanes or bus only restrictions uh, to help improve the reliability of services. And we could also look to deliver traffic signal upgrades uh, that have greater protection, uh, detection of buses um, and enable them to travel through junctions uh, more quickly. Uh, we could also look to install um, enhanced bus stop facilities um, such as uh, super stops, which have uh, a greater capacity at the shelter um, and also enhanced uh, passenger information, uh, giving them more um, information on uh, the next bus services. We're also um, looking at, uh, within the TCF programme to create local mobility hubs which would um, help uh, give people more choice to other transport choices, such as cycle hire and potentially e-scooter hire. Um, so we're actually um, proposing to uh, develop a local mobility hub within the Portswood corridor. So this would help complement um, the project. Um, as also mentioned, the Th Thomas Lewis Way corridor also forms part of this programme. Uh, and there we would look to improve the efficiency of the corridor through traffic signal upgrades, for example. So at this point, uh, we'd like to open up to some of your questions. Um, hopefully you've been typing those up and sending them through to us. Uh, I'll ask Wilson to read some of those out and then Emma and I will answer those. Uh, we may refer over to Zoe and Wade for more information if, if needed, but hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions for you. Um, Andrew, we don't we don't have any current questions. Um, Fantastic. Hopefully that means that everything's been quite clear so far. <laughs> All right then, so in which case I'll move on to the next slide. So it's important to note that this event is the first stage of our engagement program. We will be returning for further engagement in the future. The next stage is set for early 2021 and it will be open to the wider public. Um, exactly how that event's going to operate, we're still trying to work out the kinks because obviously in normal times we'd probably go to a village hall and, and, and speak to people face to face, but given the current circumstances that isn't looking likely. So we're going to have to find another way to do a digital virtual event and um, hopefully it will be nice and accessible and you know we can get some really good information out of it. If anyone um, has any comments about the proposals, the best place to send those is roadworks at southampton.gov.uk. 
That also applies if you have any questions following today's event that haven't been answered. Just fire off an email to that and we will, um, we will respond in the best time we can. If you want to learn more about the Ports for TCF project, please visit transport.southampton.gov.uk slash portswood. We'll be updating that website shortly after this event with a bit more information. And if you'd like to sign up for updates, you can do so by signing up to our newsletter bulletin. Please note this link is case sensitive, but that link is bit.ly slash portswood dash swaveling TCF. Uh, all that's left now is just to thank you very much for your time today. And uh, we hope you found this information useful. As mentioned previously, if you have any questions, please do drop us an email, get in touch and um, yeah, please get involved in, in future engagement events. Uh, so from myself and Emma and Wade and the team, thank you very much.